I'm not only going to demo just this agent being able to store conversations or chat information to memory, but we're actually going to go ahead and reference the information from its memory. Okay, so I had GPT go ahead and just create me a list of addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one and I'm going to paste it in here to Telegram. That's what I'm using for the trigger. I'm going to send it. I'm going to hit test workflow. And right now, as you see, just committed this address here to memory and it's logging me an output. So as you see here, it says this address here has been logged as of the day. So May 27, 2025 to 12 p.m. and log this address. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and log another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this address. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm gonna send it, hit test workflow, and it's gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Okay, perfect. And we see that this address was committed as of 213. Let's go ahead and log one more just for good measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this address. I'm gonna paste it in here, send it, I'm gonna hit test workflow, and we're gonna go ahead and log that address as well to memory. Okay, perfect, and we see that it's now logged to memory. So now what happens when we wanna go ahead and ask the AI, hey, what was the first address that we input, right? So I can say, all right, so I'm gonna say, what was the first address logged? I'm gonna send it, hit test workflow, and if it's right, it's, it's gonna go ahead and tell me one, two, three, Maple Street, and it did it faster than I can finish explaining. But yeah, one, two, three, Maple Street, it was logged as of, this date on 2 12 p.m. exactly. So as we see here, it not only committed the log to memory every single time, but now I'm able to reference it and it's able to let me know exactly what was the first address I committed and the time that I committed. So you're probably wondering now, okay, how is this working? So I'm using a tool called Upstash. In a prior video, I used a tool called Zep, but I actually like this one a lot better. And as you see here, this is the address log v7. I've been doing some testing. But as you see here, starting from zero to seven, we have eight really conversations, not conversation, but rather interactions. So whenever I ask the AI something, that's one interaction. When the AI creates a reply, that's another interaction. So we had eight interactions like that, right? So this was here, this here was the first one. This was the first address I committed. And then I also had to record the timestamp as well, all right? And so on for the whole conversation that we just had through Telegram, all right? So as you see here, it's committing it. Now, the way it works is not only are we using the memory slot for the agent node, but if we go ahead and open this up, a couple things to note. Number one, for the session time, I'm basically saying that this session time in seconds, this is 30 minutes, right? So I'm basically saying, hey, remember this session here for, for 1800 seconds. If you put nothing in here, I'll just keep it. Very important is the context window length. So just like how I mentioned here that there's been eight interactions from me and the AI, this length basically tells the AI how far back it should go. So if I were to continuously list all these addresses, eventually I'd run out of this context window if I keep putting in addresses. And so if I ask it for the very first address that I input it, it wouldn't be able to remember it, or it would falsely put the wrong one thinking it's right because it has no context on anything after the 20. So we can easily come in here and I can change this to 30. I could change it to 40. Right, I can change it to whatever it is that I want. And basically it will remember up to 20 for this whole conversation. And what you're gonna notice here is that every single time we log something new, right? So let me go ahead and log another one. So I'm gonna log this one. I'm gonna hit send. I'm gonna hit test workflow. It's gonna run through it again. And what you're gonna notice here, once it's finished running, is that it's going to populate the newest information at one, at one and zero. If you're wondering what this tool is, it's basically called Upstash and it supports Redis for memory. So to set this up, it's super simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here, you're gonna sign up and create an account. Once you do, it's gonna take you to a page just like this. And all you're gonna do is that you're gonna come in here and all you're gonna do is you're gonna get the, the Redis node. So you can come here and you're gonna get the Redis chat memory. You're gonna create a new credential. And then all you're gonna do, you're gonna copy this endpoint here into where, it's, where it says host, all right? You're gonna make sure that the port here is the same. Switch this SSL to active, does have SSL enabled. And then last, you're gonna copy that password and you're gonna paste the password here and that's it, right? Make sure you name it so you know what it is. You hit save and you're done, right? So setting this up is super easy. It's a very scalable way to actually give your AI agent memory. Now you're probably also wondering how exactly am I getting the time and the date. And here's the thing, Telegram is not passing me that. The way that I'm getting it is right here. So if you come in here, you can see that I am passing in day like this, now.day, now.monthlong, now.year. And basically in order to do that, all you're gonna do is you're gonna put in the curly braces with a dollar sign, you're gonna hit now dot, and you can type in day, has the day here, has the year as well, right? So there's different components, right? When you click on it, you see that it's gonna map. So here, timestamp, this is gonna map to this and so on and so forth for everything else.
All right. So that's basically how I'm giving the AI agent time context like that. And here at the bottom, you can kind of see I'm basically saying when give me the time, tell it to me in the regular format, not military time. So that 1300, but 1 PM, otherwise it would input out in that military time format. Now, another thing as well is that you can actually create multiple of these, uh, here, I'm gonna go to it. You can actually create multiple of these memory logs, right? So if I wanted to, I can come here and put eight and I'm going to go ahead and grab the next address and I'm going to send it and I'm going to hit test workflow. And we see here now that it created a new memory log. Right. So now if I go in here and I, and I want to reference anything from log seven, well, I'm not gonna be able to do that because it's going to sit in its own memory log. And this is one of the features that I really liked about this. All you really have to do here is you come in here to your, to the node, you basically specify a new key, and then that basically will start off a new memory log here for your AI. And the cool thing about that is that if you have another AI agent somewhere and you want that agent to plug into this memory, all you have to do is just basically duplicate this this node over to that agent, plug it right in, and right away it has access to all this memory here. So yeah, so that's it, super simple, right? But if you wanna get even like more simple than that, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate this. Another way that we can do it is actually just using Google Sheets. And the cool thing with using Google Sheets, it's a really good idea to use Google Sheets if you actually wanted to remember things like maybe your name or things that you like or preferences or things like that, right? Things where you're not really gonna maybe load it with a thousand rows of information, but maybe there's like 10 or 20 things that you always want your AI agent to keep in mind whenever you're interacting with it, right? So in order to do that, super simple, all we have to do is we're gonna use it as a tool, but we're gonna have two different uh, Google Sheet nodes here. So this here is basically the Google Sheet tool that I set up. Basically it's, it's street, city, state, zip code, and the created app. Again, so if I, if I come here and I just copy this address and I put it in here and I hit send and basically it's went ahead and it recorded the information here as well as the created app. And again, same thing, I'm using the exact same uh, setup here, the curly braces in order to get the whole date format here. But what I'm doing is, as you see here now, you need to have two because this one here is the get. This one's basically reading the log if I want to reference things from memory. And then this one here is going to append new things to the log if I want to input something else, right? And what I'm doing here is that for the created at, I'm basically letting the AI specify the format. So yeah, so that's basically it. So if I want, again, let me go ahead and just store another one in here so I can say this 555 address. I'm going to send it. I'm going to hit test workflow. And again, AI agent is going to run through the instructions. It's going to append a new one to the log. So now if I want, right, I could say, okay, right. I can basically say what was the first address logged, which should get me this address here. So I'm going to hit test workflow. And as you see, this agent's going to go ahead and do the read function. And as you see here, it gets me the, the first address that we did input as well as the timestamp as well. Okay. So again, that's a very simple way that you can use memory. If you want to have a memory node where you kind of have this back and forth interaction with your AI agent and you kind of want it to recall maybe something you just said in a couple of messages ago, right? In a very scalable way, using this Redis memory is a really good way to go. And at the same time, you can actually have it append memory here as well. So if you wanted to remember certain attributes of yourself, you can actually include it as a tool and basically you can instruct the AI to say, before you give me any answer, go ahead, read from my tool of stored memories, and then use that for context for anything else that you output. So yeah, I'll definitely make sure that I include this link here in the description below so you can go ahead and set it up. And if you want to check out any of my other free N8N templates, do check the link in the description below. Anyway, I hope you got value out of this video and I'll see you in the next one.